Okay, um, hello everybody. Welcome to another review on um, the channel of Salford York Street. And this time we are back with another Bombay loco and another railroad loco. Um, but this time it's a steamy and a larger one at that. One actually fitted with a tender. The first such loco to be featured on this channel in a review. And the first such loco to just be featured on this channel, full stop. Um, in case you can't, in case you didn't notice from the, sorry about my finger there, in case you didn't notice from the iconic shape there, this is a Gresley Class A4 locomotive, 462 Pacific. And it, it does have a corridor tender, as you can see there. It is number 60022 Mallard. Uh, now, uh, obviously this isn't in its main livery, the livery it's known for. This is in the later British Rail Green livery with the late crest on the tender there. So some people, I'm not saying many, some people may not recognise it as the Mallard. and may think, but that's not very authentic. It's perfectly authentic, it's just not how it's currently painted. And as we can see there, this locomotive is called Mallard. So, having scored higher than the Backman E4 on, in the Model Rail magazine uh, sort of review thing, I'm hoping this is going to be an excellent locomotive. So if we start, I'm going to try and keep the loco on the board because of, yeah we'll start there actually, because of the awkward arrangement between the tender and the locomotive there. You can see those wires and that plug there, the little white bit on the tender is a nightmare to take out. So I'm not going to try again. And um, I'm just going to try and keep them coupled. So I'm going to try and keep her on the board rather than lifting her up all the time and risking that coupling arrangement breaking. Sorry, just nail on the thing there. So, we'll start with the side as usual, and we'll start on the tender. Sorry about my finger again. Um, there isn't an awful lot to look at, actually. The tender is very basic compared to the locomotive. Although there is a bit of detail on the underframe there, I don't know if you can see that, it is quite a dark loco. Um, and there are brake rods underneath there. Uh, there is a handrail here, it's painted green, I don't know if you can about see it, yeah, just there, can you see it? I don't know why I'm asking you, it's not like you can answer me right now. The <laughs> um, livery is nicely applicated with the double red stripe going around the tender there, and as I've already mentioned, the late crest of British Railways, which is easily legible. The lion in the crown with the wheel in its paws and the weird blue tongue. But anyway, onto the locomotive. Uh, there is no glazing in the cab windows there. And you can actually see the smoke box back head. Sorry, the firebox back head through the front window there. Um, you've got some basic details on the firebox itself. Just um, around there, look. And on the trailing wheel. Moving on a bit. Again, you've got some more basic details here and there. Uh, this one is without the... Um, and the name has gone from my head. Without the little bit that covers the wheels there and the, all the linkage. Which, to be fair, is quite a good thing. Because it allows you to see all of that linkage in motion when the locomotive starts up, which is a real treat. And I'll try and get you some good views of that later. You got the front truck there, which is pretty basic, but then again, what you put on a front truck. And you can see all the way down the side here, just there, you've got a nice fine handrail, which just ends over there. Same colour as the body, I don't know whether that's prototypical or not, but that's what they've done. Um, you can see the number's nicely applicated on the side of the cab, with RA9 written below it, just there. Um, 
and you got the red stripes going around the boiler and at the front we got the the smoke the sorry the smoke box as well um oh, blimey <laughs> show my voice then we try and turn around so she's facing the front there we go quite a big local so it's hard to do that but there we go and see so you got some nice little items of livery there and the number again on the front on the separately fitted board 60002 and you can also see the whistle just in front of the iconic chimney which is a double chimney as well as you can see um, so my thing is continually getting in the way here <laughs> Uh, you can see you've got a bit of, uh, I don't know if you'd call it the buffer beam really, on this. Um, well, I'm going to call it the buffer beam. Got a bit of buffer beam detail, the vacuum piping and the, uh, the fake coupling there. Uh, that's a good point actually. You cannot fit a coupling without a fair bit of modification work to the front. But then again, why would you have a coupling on the front of this loco? Seriously. The it just defeat the whole object of the whole streamlined thing it just make it a waste of time and a waste of money so no there is no coupling um on the front which is good you've got sprung okay <laughs> um you do have sprung metal buffers when the front stays on uh, off, right, <laughs> I'll fit that on in a minute. That's new. Uh, sorry, I lost my thread a bit now. <laughs> um, okay. So, I, I don't think that's supposed to happen. But uh, just quickly moving on to the other side. I didn't press that much, Charles. I did just gently press the sprung buffer. Right. Um, on, on this side, you've got the, a little pipe running below the handrail. It's there, which is separately fitted, but not separately coloured. Uh, other than that, it's basically the same. On the cab roof... Okay, sorry, folks. Um... Right, well, I've put the front buffer beam back in place, so it should be okay there. So anyway, moving back onto the cab roof, which I think is where I left off. Um, just here you've got, I think they're the safety valves underneath. Uh, I think they are. Pretty sure they are. But other than that, the and they're separately fitted as well. But other than that, the roof detail is rather basic, apart from, of course, the rivets. Sure, litter the place as usual. Um, the other side of the tender is uh, identical to the side we just looked at with the handrail, the livery, and other than that, pretty much nothing. Um, but if we all have a look at the top of the tender here, you've got the coal load, which is quite fake and unrealistic, if I'm going to be honest. Although it does the job, it does the job, it's it's good enough, although it would have been nice if it was removable, that, that would have been an, a bit of a bonus. But this is, a, of course, a railroad model, so you can't expect too much. And the water area at the back is very crude, as you can see, and also very dusty. <sighs> that did absolutely nothing. Um, but if we just try and turn around again, this time onto the back. I've just shorted out the track, but oh well. Um, on the back, it's a similar, well it's not really a similar story because we haven't looked at the back yet. I don't know why I was saying that, but you've got some detail just here on either side of the gangway. Look, like I say, this is a corridor tender, so you've got the gangway here, which allows the crew to access the coaches. Uh, the gangway's nice, looks nice, you've got some fine metal handrails on both sides, and also going over the top of the gangway, just there. The coupling is small and nem, which is excellent. There is a very strange criticism though, and that is that these buffers are not strung, sprung, strung, sprung, 
Whereas the ones at the front, ah, though they do have a tendency to fall off apparently as well. <laughs> so that's, that's a bit strange, but well, I'm sure there'll be a reason for that. Most probably something to do with cost. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure why they did that, but if we move around, I'm going to move her quite close because I want to show you. I think that's the best we're going to get inside the tender front there. You've got those little bits of detail in there. Look, I don't know if you can see them, but there's some separate, separately fitted uh, details there, as well as the little door there to get to the coal load, obviously. You can also see a very crude door just on this side here, which would take you down the side of the tender and out the gangway at the back there. And I assume this stuff here is all about getting, is all about that path as well. No, sorry about that. And then on the other side there, is where the void that is supposed to be the cab. Um, yeah, there's, there's pretty much nothing in there. Very small amount of detail, but it's not much, and it's nowhere near what it should be. It is basically just a black void. With a very, very little bit in there. So that's... Yeah, there's, there's only two major criticisms, and that is the cab, which is just to keep costs down, so you can understand it as soon as it's part of the railroad range. And the lack of sprung buffers at the back, when you actually do have them at the front. It's weird. And that's the third criticism. The front buffers fall off. So, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm still just trying to figure that one out, because I can't imagine that's very cost effective. <laughs> Um, but nevertheless, they do fall off if you so much as touch them. Although they stayed on this time, you can see the sprung buffers there this time. But other than that, she is a great loco. So we just need to put her on the tracks. I have no idea how long this video is going to end up being, but I imagine it's probably going to be quite a while. Sorry, I'm a bit OCD on the way I put her on as well. So, got to go on the right way, of course. And I'm sorry if this isn't a good view for you. I'm just trying to put her on one-handed, which is quite difficult when you're handling a Pacific Loco. So, preferably without buffers falling off. Can we go, my lad? Yeah, again, she's got that slow thing where she starts off really slow and slows down really slow. That's supposed to happen. That's for realism. So you may not like it, but I quite like it. So. And she's off. Okay, so as she comes round past the new buffer, well, not the new buffer, but the new buffer light, and round past the water tower. You can hear that a motor is a bit louder than some of the, so than the likes of the regional railways, the 37s. But it's still quite good, really. And she runs at a realistic speed. This is about the middle speed. So she can go faster and she can also go slower. So as she comes around the front, I'll just try and get you a picture of all that linkage working. You can see it there. Yeah, see all that. Obviously with bad lighting around here, it's hard to show you properly, but... She is a nice runner, really. So here she comes again, just coming down. She's very elegant, but almost sad, really, <laughs> with the dark colours. That's me just personifying a model railway locomotive, even if it is my lad. Right, so what I'm going to try and do is get her to go a bit slower. 
and we'll test a slow speed performance. Okay, so there we go, that's quite good. Okay, it's coming on the other side of that pole. Okay, down to what is nearly the slowest speed you can do. Right, sorry about that, folks. Just the uh, camera playing up again. So we'll try and get to go at her lowest possible speed, shall we? I think you can just see the linkage still go in there. At that very, very slow speed. She's still moving. I can hold the camera skirt still for a minute. See that she is still moving. That is quite impressive when you think about it. Very impressive. As she crawls past the 08, which is yet again there. That is pretty good. So I think what we'll do is we'll speed her up a bit. In fact, no, we won't. I think this is probably the worst possible locomotive I could have chosen to do this with. But I'm actually going to reverse her into position this time. So here she comes. she is. So you know what we have to do now? It is indeed time for the great pedestal of Salford York Street. So, and that is a name I'm never going to call it again because that just did not sound right. Sorry again if this is a bit of a poor view for you. But This is quite a difficult <laughs> manoeuvre, putting a Pacific. And there she is. 